Hey YouTubers, got a treat for you today. We're here in Fletcher, North Carolina, just outside of Asheville, and we're at the Big Adventures Factory Store. This is where they have native watercraft, bonafide kayaks, and some uh, liquid logic. And they've got a store here that's loaded down with all kinds of stuff. I mean, you got your little rods, you got your Dakota lithium batteries, and all your yak power stuff. And then all your yak attack accessories and you know your micro uh, poles and all that and it's a pretty nice place and they've got tons of kayak tons of gear and just a little bit of everything and then they got a couple native titan 12s here and look at all these they've got a nice selection I guess uh, got the big native mural up there. Man, these are really nice. And these are some nice, nice kayaks. Hope to be taking home a native Titan 12 today. So I'm super, super excited. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of video around the the store and and that way in case you're interested in coming up here you know uh, you can come check it out and they've also got the liquid logic whitewater kayaks as well on top top of all the fishing kayaks I seen a tandem kayak over there I mean this place is <laughs> it's loaded down with everything bending branches kayak paddles NRS life jackets but man they got they got the selection they really do have a nice selection here and then you got uh, some more kayaks these are hurricane check it out uh, and they've even got a rooftop tent and trailer in here man that's nice it's a Yakima. Got some more bonafide kayaks right there. Some more liquid logic. And we're even going to be doing a little plant tour. We're going to peek in there. I don't know how much they'll let us see, but we figured we'd try to get a little tour. But if you want to come here and Check out the kayaks, man. They got them. There's a bunch. They de definitely have you covered. It's a big building, too. Hi, I'm Woody Calloway with Big Adventures. We uh, make four, we have four different brands native watercraft. Bonafide kayaks, Liquid Logic kayaks, and our sister company, Hurricane Kayaks. So we're going to take a quick tour, show you how these things are built. And this is our new mascot. This is Nelly. <laughs> it's kind of a new concept, or not new, but you can bring your dog to work here. As long as it's nice. <laughs> Nelly's too nice. You'd think that was his owner, but it's not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Come on this way. Awesome. Wow. So this is actually the room that we box and put together um, our side kits. Cool. They come in in boxes. There's a box of tires already blown. We have to blow up all the tires first. And this is the assembly area for that. Wow. And the boats you see there are the ones that are going to sell out of the store. We sell a lot of G2s mm -hmm. out of our store. Um, little small flaws like graphic tour chips so we have had it it's easier and their retailers can get them as well but we normally sell second time or something okay cool how many square foot is this place this place is about eighty thousand. wow 
That's crazy. There's another whole room over there. Wow. But this is a manufacturing plant. So our receiving doors are on that end of the building. All the parts are going on right to the middle. These are called Gaylords. This is what we get the resin, what we call resin plastic in. It's about 1,200 pounds a box. Wow. And you can see some of them are up on racks as well. And then uh, the manufacturing actually starts on the other end. So but let's walk around and kind of start where manufacturing starts with the ovens and then come back this way. Okay. So a lot of people don't know this, but we sew our own seats in our boats. And this is the sewing department. It's located kind of in the middle. So this, there's a lot of different machines do a lot of different things, but this is basically one happy family. And uh, they came from Astral Designs, which makes pretty famous life jackets. Mm -hmm. They moved that sewing overseas, and we hired them when we moved here. So cool. it's pretty seamless. So. So we make all our seats here, a lot of different machines, a lot of different positions, sewing and delivery here, and all the cutting the materials are on the other side of that rack. And if you look on the other side, this is where we start molding boats. You can see how these seats are stacked up on frames. This is the, right beside the seat stretching area. Huh. Then we're going to go over to what I'm going to show you the ovens. So this is where manufacturing starts, the making of the hull. And there's two two different kinds of ovens: rock and roll, which are these long ones. The boat actually spins like it is on that axis over there. Oh. That's a cooling tray, so that boat's cooling. But when the boat's in the in the oven, it's like a clamshell. It opens up like a clamshell, and I get to see that happen right here. Huh. So that boat is slowly, that mold is slowly rotating in the oven. And you see it's still rotating as it comes up. That entire oven is called a rock and roll, so the boat's slowly moving inside. That entire oven will rock up to about 45, 50 degrees and stay at that position a while. Come back down and rock up to the other side. And that gives us the flow. This plastic looks like sugar when we get it. Yeah, you can see it on the floor. Yeah. So this plastic looks like kind of like colored sugar maybe a little finer and we weigh it out put it in the mold it turns to gel inside the mold due to heat and won't stay in here to the outside it's it's inside to the inside of the mold it won't sit here to it as it melts and so that gel stays at the bottom and you rotate it pretty much kind of making building up coating after coating till you get the thickness of of the boat you, you desire and that's kind of like learning each mold each mold is different but uh so these are rock and roll ovens comes out over to the crane and he's now put it in the cooling cycle which it'll start turning again until it reaches the temperature inside that we know it's ready to demold it needs to cool by continually rotating <clears throat> while in the cooling cycle It'll, uh, it won't pre-release and damage the boat. It'll, it'll more likely come out of the good boat. Cool. So it's got to cool down. We've got a little laser gun that we shoot at it. We can tell what the inside temperature is. Hmm. So he's got pans, a little bit of water mist, just to kind of cool it down a little faster. So start to finish, how long does it take to, to do the mold on one? About 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Uh, Wow, well, that's pretty impressive. So, like on a rock and roll oven, you do a three boat rotation. He's getting ready to put another boat inside, so one's in, one's out cooling, and one's being demolded and charged back up, putting the logos on. The logos are actually not, they look like stickers. 
but they're actually made out of the same material that the boat is and it just bonds inside the of kind huh. of baked on and comes off of it. Oh, that's cool. They've already got it prepared to charge, and the logos are already on it. So they put those logos on the outside, and then it bonds in the plastic and becomes part of the boat. Wow. Man, guys at home, you, you have no clue how hot this is. I mean, it is it is warm back here. So these guys working in this plant? It's about a little over 500 degrees. 500 degrees, you heard it. That's crazy. I'd hate to be working back here all day. <laughs> be back here in August. This is lovely. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so that's a rock and roll up. We're going to move over to the biaxial one. So we talked about this is a three boat rotation, only one boat in the oven at a time. On a biaxial machine, you can do more than that. Wow. get the, the boat cooled down it goes into a, we make fiberglass molds that alter the shape of the boat uh -huh. and so while it is cooling down it's cool enough to get out of the mold we set it in the a cooling fixture like this uh -huh. and just so it, it helps us keep that shape because what most people don't realize is, is in designing a kayak if you want a 12 foot boat you have to design that boat bigger because you got to get you got it's going to shrink about three to five percent. So when we bring the old boat over here, it'll fit perfectly in this tray, and by the time it cools down, it'll be that much shorter. Wow! So we got when you design, you have to kind of figure that in. So it shrinks up that much. Yeah. Wow. So that's neat how that thing moves like a ship back and forth. They just yeah, that's, yeah, again, that's called a rock and roll oven or a clam oven. As it opens up like a clam shell. But we can only do one boat, one model at a time in that. But it's a three boat rotation. One's in the oven, one's cooling, one's already prepared to go back in the oven. Wow. And then it rolls out. If we're, we can really produce mold boats faster than we can assemble this used to not be the case until this fishing started happening and there's just a lot of stuff you got to be attached to them but so a lot of hulls if we're, if we're making more hulls than we're assembling they go stand up against that wall but we'd like to make them as they come out huh. and so if it goes in the cooling tray and then this is an assembly stand now we're going to move over and, and talk about biaxial. Guys, this is a big facility. It's amazing. And I got to say, everybody that's here seems to be pretty happy. You know, everybody I've talked to, they, they even allow you to bring your own dog to, to work with you. It's a really laid back place. It's not like most uh, facilities I've been in. to our biaxial ovens. We have a small biaxial that we do our parts and anything under 10 foot. So a lot of seats, a lot of rails, a lot of small parts that we run the mold, and then all of our white water boats. Hmm. We turn it over here, and let's look at this big monster. This is the largest biaxial oven that we have. It's pretty big. And wow. you can tell that there's two molds per arm. There are three arms. So we can mold that. Two boats go in the oven at the same time. And it's kind of like the sick Ferris wheel. You know how that one will just rock and roll? This one's on a knuckle. And so the knuckle rotates and it also spins. Hmm. And what's really cool about that, it's really able to get good coverage, even in tight areas. You know what I mean? 
So it's, that whole arm rotating, rotates, and you see it also spins. So it's kind of like a cool fair, uh, fair ride. You know? <laughs> so this is a six boat rotation on this arm. So two boats are in the oven, two boats are being cooled and demolded, and then two boats are being charged up with logos, getting ready to go. So. That oven will make six boats at a time in about any length because it's so big. Wow. That's crazy. And then over here is where we have our active mold store. A lot of molds in here. Let's walk up this way. Go all the way down. So the mold comes apart at the party line. The party line is always at the widest part of the boat the biggest part so that it comes out comes apart and then you can get the boat out if it was a if it was a smaller part of the boat you couldn't get it out huh. so that line you see around all the boats that's called the party line and it, that's where the molds come together cool. and a lot of people ask how much is the mold we're charged you're charged by mold by the party line that's this line right here. The total distance of the party line is how you're charged. So a 12 foot boat costs more than a 10 foot boat. But that's how they that's how they charge it. And they're most of them are cast aluminum. What is what mold is that? The 13.5? Yeah. That's a that's a boat, man. <laughs> yeah. That thing is huge. Goodness gracious. There's a lot of work goes into these molds too, making them. Oh yeah, you know, like like that thirteen five. Just the mold without the framing done, it's probably eighty grand. Wow. So you're looking at a lot of money on this mold. Oh, I guarantee you. And over here is our small parts uh, assembly. So this is feeding the assembly stands over there. So you see all these Gaylords full apart. That's kind of the beauty of it is they can, instead of going on, making strictly to production, they can do a lot of each part at one time. Good, easy place to store it and easy for the pickers to come pick them, take it to the assembly stand. So that's in the cooling cycle now. Those two big fans are blowing in the nest of water. You don't want to. You don't want to shoot too much cold water on it at one time because the part inside, again, it wants to adhere to the inside of the mold. If you were to try to cool it too fast, like shoot it with water, it would get the inside of the mold would go ah and pull away, just kind of pre-release, so uh. it wouldn't keep its shape. Cool. I bet you there was a lot of trial and error with this. Yeah, I don't know who figured this out, but he did a good job. <laughs> so this is where we store some of our smaller parts, our seeds, white water seeds. And guys, this is in a totally different part of the warehouse, and it's air conditioned in here. <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> so 10 foot storage, just like we had a wall over there with holes in it. Mm -hmm. Over here we have most of in this first rack, unwrapped, is just waiting to be uh, assembled. Wow. But everything you see in this warehouse that's got a cover on it, ready to ship, is sold. Wow. You, you know, making boats that aren't sold is like 1980s. <laughs> you know, now you don't do that. You, you, you build to order. And this is the shipping department. This is, this is Daniel. 
Howdy. How's it going? Daniel's in the process of cutting up some cardboard, some old uh, uh, plastic boxes, and he uses that. We put a layer of boats. We use this thick cardboard before down before we put another layer on top. Hmm. So he's preparing that. It's always something, isn't it? Always something. <laughs> Wow. Guys, you can't even imagine how many kayaks is standing up in this place. It's unreal. And what's really unreal is that everything's sold. Yeah. <laughs> We're just building shipments, you know. A lot of people go, well, I've ordered a boat from such and such retailer. Well, why is not it shipped? Well, that retailer's shipment hasn't been fulfilled parts-wise. We might be waiting on a couple models. We got we have to build the shipment. So we, we do do we do do a run of boats like there's a minimum like we wouldn't make less than twenty of a model. Just because you gotta put the mold up, get it charged up, get it figured out each time. How long does it take to switch a mold out? Uh if I, everything goes well, probably 20, 30 minutes. 20 30 minutes, wow. But think about it, you just missed a rotation. You just missed a hull. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And on the biaxial, if you're changing out two, you're missing that rotation, you're missing that two, making two boats. So this is, uh, we, we kind of do a lot of shipping and consolidating with our sister company, Hurricane Kayaks, which is down in Warsaw, North Carolina. Hmm. And they make a, kind of a light recreational boats. They're, uh, it's a totally different process. It's not rotational molding, it's thermoforming or vacuum molding. So those boats come in, sh the plastic comes in a sheet and goes in an oven, the mold's upside down, and then a vacuum heats that, the oven heats up that plastic and is drawn up by a vacuum and formed. And that's, it's really cool to watch. It's, you probably seen it, you know, like that, uh, Star Wars when uh, I forget who what it gets in that carbon thing and it sucks around his face and his hand. That's exactly the same process. Oh, that's cool. Back that's really cool. cool. But yeah, everything in here you see is sold. Wow, that's I'm unreal. To ship it. That's unreal. And yeah. these are all staged, waiting for a truck to show up. <laughs> and now you see the different color tapes. Uh -huh. It's a different retailer it's going to. So we'll load this up according to the stocks and the guys that are unloading them. You get all the blue ones. Huh. Pull them out the blue one. Wow. We try to idiot proof everything as much <laughs> as we can. <laughs> oh, yeah. My gosh, this place just keeps going and going and going. There's another little room I can't show you. is our R&D room where we're uh, always working on something, you know. Cool. It's always something going on, but can show you that room. Oh yeah, top secret, guys. So we cut a lot of foam here, a lot of whitewater boats, a lot of structure pieces for fishing boats. But everything has a pattern, and it's made out of stuff you get at walk. I don't even know what this is called, but you just get it loads, you know. Mm -hmm. So we made this saw. This was a big band saw, and it's old. But it is awesome. Goodness gracious. So basically, you just have little spikes. You put it in your foam. And this is a really cool, um, it was a bandsaw, but we, did, we cut grooves in the piano wire. Oh. What's really cool is it won't, it'll scare you, but it won't cut you. Huh. And it'll cut in every direction, and it won't cut the pattern. So all you gotta do is just run it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Before we figure this out, we were doing it all on a bandsaw. It was really fun trying to follow the line. And then boom, it fell apart. Wow. But yeah, it's cool. It's just a piano wire. <laughs> that it, is. It'll scare you. That is such overkill for cutting foam. Yeah. That's the Benford 5000. But it works great. That's awesome. Walk over to the other end of the building here and go in the propel room. 
I'll see if there's anything they don't want to film, that right? should be fine. All these boxes are full of resin, about 1,200 pounds each. Wow. All those boxes are full of resin, and we just sent a truck down to get about 100 more. So for all you guys in my group, always asking about, you know, uh, what's a good company to get a kayak from, you want to support the United States, hey, this is where it's at right here. They make everything in house right here. It's pretty amazing. And I gotta say, this place never freaking ends. It's huge. Like he said, we're fixing to go into the propel room. Uh, he said his wife runs this part, but we're gonna wait out here and let him go talk and see if there's anything that we can't see in there. <laughs> there was a few things I didn't wanna get too close on and reveal any trade secrets or anything like that surprised they even let me take the no, tour oh they're gonna let me in morning, morning. morning. how you doing this is our propel assembly room and uh, this run by my wife actually kim Hi. And Hi. her employee or helper, Wes. Cool. My teammate. So this is how we do it. <coughs> so you know, there's a couple different tables, a couple different stations. That's more of a pre-assembly station over there. And now they uh, are putting them all together over here. And there's about, how many, 80, 89 parts? There's 80-something um, parts in here. There's 60-some different parts. And so there'll be multiples of things, like eight of, you know, a screw. But it is a lot. It's a lot. I've got a question for you. And there's a lot of uh, different people asking online, you know, about servicing the propel unit and stuff and the right. different grease and all that to use. Uh, what do you guys use here? We use the Teflon grease, which is, Just I don't know if you want to take a picture of it. Sure. I'd love to. Yeah, that's what we use on it. He's getting ready to put his on his yeah. units right Finish now. On. This is yeah. stuff right here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the dog stuff. It's okay. Stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, no attention see? to the You can see it right there. Uh huh. There's a port on the side the, with a needle gun. And it, honestly, Teflon, we use Teflon grease because it has a little bit of a. Uh, we feel it has a little more adhesion to it and stick it but you know it's what's really funny for us is to watch is a guy shooting a video and he's spinning the propeller and it's like look i got this one's making a noise we're like look dude you're <laughs> spinning that thing if you were on the water you'd be trying to go 100 miles an hour <laughs> yeah. so it's a 10 to 1 ratio with the pedal and the prop right and honestly you are limited by speed, not by the prop size, not by, you're limited with the hull shape and how much weight you're putting in the boat. It's only going to go so fast. So pedaling it harder, you're going to have a tendency to cavitate a little bit more, catch the air from the top. So really, to go maximum speed, it's easy to get it up to max speed and then keeping it at max speed really you're only pedaling like you should only be pedaling like that but you see people just, just stay. <laughs> or it's like just and you know, another funny thing is we see this guy i just got my unit and he's just spinning it and we're going dude you're just slinging your grease right off <laughs> you, so you know what i mean oh yeah it's going to work to the outside Dude, regardless if you, if you use your unit a lot i do recommend um you know, listening to it before you go out. Um, I would say you probably need to go on, if you're using it every weekend, go on and replace your grease after about two, three months, just mm -hmm. depending on how much use you have to keep your gears in good shape. 
Well, guys, you heard, you heard it from her. Uh, I, I mean, the other day I was watching a YouTube video and there was a YouTuber on there that says, oh, they don't put very much grease on there from the factory. Well, it clearly shows right here. They didn't know I was coming. I mean, I just yeah. popped in today and you can see these gears are loaded down. So. And that's just one gear because we load both gears down. So, yeah, there, it's we definitely make sure there's plenty of grease that people send it in looking and say, oh, there's a problem with my unit. It's really loud. Well, it's because there's no grease left on your gears, and then that's when damage can happen. So oh. just a little bit of extra. Go ahead. You, I was going to say, how often should you? That's what I said to him earlier about it. if it's heavy usage, I would say every two, three months. Mm -hmm. like it's like every weekend. Because I've seen him come back four or five months later with no grease. I also seen a video a few weeks ago about this locking ring here on the bottom. Somebody said that they come loose and so they ordered another one of the rings from Native Watercraft and just snugged it on top of that one and yeah. used it as a jam nut. Can yeah. you do that? So, you well, can. You can. Um, that was an old I, problem. Yeah, we, we found that, you know, anytime you're making any product, yeah you're trying to improve your processes so originally we didn't lock tight it and then we didn't lock tight it with a strong enough color maybe and then we found out that the lot some lock tight that we were purchasing for this situation didn't work with an oily uh, metal and all the metals are oily. So now we wash every part. They get clean. They everything gets clean before we apply it. So that while that is has in the past been a situation that double nutting couple of retailers started doing it. Um, we just kind of figured out how not to do that and not put. I know it's going to sound cheap, but not put an extra nut on there if we could do it right to start with. Sure. Doing that. And that's pretty cool how they have a jig set up, guys, where it mounts up and holds it in place, so you ain't got to try to wrestle with it. I'd like to figure out how to get some for everybody, you know, to have an opportunity to have a place to put their unit to maintain it. Yeah, that'd be pretty neat if they made those, just where you could buy them as a customer. I see a lot of guys just put them right back in the kayak and that's probably a pretty easy way to do it too. Alright. So So sometimes this is a little tricky right here. This little pen has always been in here. This is what the fin attaches to. Or excuse me, not the fin, the the propeller. When we integrated the weed guard in here, it made it to where this has to be in here all the time. So I'm gonna show a little secret on how to put your lower cartridge in with the pen in here and not have an issue with having to listen to the pen scratch on the side. So I'm gonna step in front of you for just a minute. And I'm gonna put, I'm just putting a pedal crank arm up there. I don't use the pedals every day. So I just take this rubber band and I wrap it around the pen and sort of mount it to the um, propeller spindle so that when, I don't know if you want to come around to the other side. Sure, sure, sure. All right, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and screw it in, but I want to listen to it. So we're going gonna to screw it in almost all the way. And while you're screwing it in, use your pedal, sort of tap it back and forth until you hear the tap. And, and when you feel the tap, you can center the gear it, in there and just spin it in. And you're welcome to try it too. Hmm. I don't know that I did a very good, it's Monday morning. Because right. you definitely don't want those gears to clunk. No, That's not good for the want, gear. You don't want them to and we don't ridge want... to ridge either. You, know? you want no. them to seat. So... You could put that in and the gears hit ridge to ridge and you think you're done. Yeah. Right? So, so moving that pedal back and forth, you can kind of feel it. Kind of feel it so that you're sliding it in correctly. Then when I tighten it with the wrench, I'm not tightening it. I'm not strangling it. I'm just making sure it's, that it's tight until it stops. 
Now I want to listen to it. This will be the first time this unit's ever been listened to. Sounds awesome. And that's it. That's my test to see if it works right. And again, you will get some noise from it because that's just how gears work. Right. I mean, there it's metal. Yeah, it's metal. And so again, I see a lot of thread. We see a lot of threads over the years, and people expect it to have no sound. It's impossible. It's quiet. It's not noiseless. So again, we'll do it again. Like I usually have your crank arm. I recommend putting on your lower cartridge with your crank arms on so that you have a guide. And I do righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we just slide it in. And when we know we're getting close, we wiggle our crank arm back and forth. When you hear the tap, you just center your crank arm so that the gears will be centered. And it's that easy, just it's screw it just down. It's that easy. And sometimes, if you're thinking about it too much, it will have already happened. I've had little classes in here, and so I'm like, you already did it. And they're like, I didn't even know. And I said, <laughs> you got it. So, yeah, this, this little rubber band is a nice way to make sure that you have it. Um, it just keeps this pin from scratching up the sides, and that interferes with any kind of sound that... Um, we don't want to hear that sound. We want to hear if the unit's right. Sure. Yep. And so it does make a little sound, but that's a good sound. Mm -hmm. It's a really good sound. It's nice and smooth. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you showing us. Yeah, I'm glad you all stopped in. Yeah. All right, here we go. We made it to the break room. Yeah, <laughs> they're in the break room, conference room, and then we're going back over to the office over here. Cool. Doing a big loop. And again, guys, I gotta say, everybody here has just been amazing. He's the friendliest bunch. Everybody has been so friendly. Remy. Come here, girl. This is Remy. This is Nellie's older sister. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> and this is Hank, he's Jack. <laughs> you don't want to see any other dog getting fed. <laughs> aren't you jealous? You jealous, boy, aren't you? This is where all the smart people look. <laughs> Come on in, we're back in here with Lucas. Alright, guys, so we're back in the, the lobby now. And like I said, they have everything in here. You can see they've got the uh, suspense carts. That's the one that I use right here. I've done a review on that. If you hadn't seen the, the video on it, I'll try to link it at the end of the video. So you guys can check that out. And there's the Titan Propel 12. Man, she is a beauty. Got her in green. Man, I can't wait. Can't wait to get out in this thing. All right, guys, so that's the end of this video we're gonna wrap it up we just left uh big adventures we're fixing to head around back i got a surprise for you guys so here it is uh we told you I had a surprise for you we're gonna be building this uh native watercraft and we're gonna have a lot of videos coming up on this thing so stay tuned and we're fixing to load this thing up got the gladiator backed up right here and we're fixing to head back to tennessee so Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Don't forget to check out Fishing Kayak Mods on Facebook and Kayak Trailer Mods.